Welcome. In this lesson, we're going to be making this U prong eternity ring, and it's just using some two mil stones. Uh, it's a U shaped prong setting, so we've got a prong that goes from one side of the, the stone, the girdle, to the other side, and uh, back down. And it's just got a little sort of seat area, sort of, uh, well, it's not really a seat, it's just a bit of metal underneath just to, to hold the rest of the ring in place. And the prongs are, I think, 0.8 mil. So uh, it's a pretty straightforward exercise. And again, uh, as with some of the other exercises, the great thing is once you've done this with this size stone, 2 mil, you can easily adapt it to larger or smaller stones or different cut of stones. So great for princess cut uh, or baguettes or whatever else. And the other option you've got is that, of course, you know, you don't have to do a full 360. Uh, degree band you might want to stop that part way up and have a, a shank uh, coming down part way down here so again there's lots of options with this uh, once you know the technique and it's similar to uh, one of the exercises we've done a little earlier okay that's it let's get into this exercise now so we'll come to the file menu and select new Okay, so let's maximize our perspective viewport. So just double click on the perspective viewport to maximize that, as you know. We'll come to the finger size under jewelry and come to gauge. Let's place a ring gauge. Uh, I'll use a size P here. And again, just check that in your region you know this is 17.9 mil just select something close for your region wherever you are and just click the OK button close out of that now we'll place a gemstone so come to the gems tab and gem studio and we're going to place a round stone here but we're going to use a two millimeter stone so just click there and either press tab or enter to place that and click OK. We'll come to our front view and let's pull this stone up so it's sitting in the right sort of spot. What we'll just do now is we'll offset just away from uh, this existing circle. So come to drawing and offset and we want to offset by a distance here of we'll use 0.4 just press enter and just make sure you're offsetting to the outside of the existing circle there and this will be basically give us a, a measurement for our um, our u-shaped prong that we're going to place it's going to be 0.8 mil in diameter so this represents half of that 0.4 just you'll see when we use this a bit later if you want you can push the stone up a little bit higher I've got it sitting if you look at uh, my gauge it's under 2 mil above the gauge there the top of the stone it's sitting uh, what, about 0.3 of a mil down from from that grid line there so that looks okay we're about one, two, three, four, five, four, yeah, about 0.5, half a mil up from the bottom of our finger rail. Now what we're going to do is just an array of that stone around. So just select that one stone and come to transform. And we'll use a dynamic polar array. Mine's set to the wrong degree. I'll just set that to 360. We we'll want this to go all the way around. 10 stones is not enough. I don't know, we probably need 26 or so, or a few more actually. Put them in a bit tighter. 29, actually 30. We'll do. So I've got 30 stones here arrayed around this eternity ring. I'll just say OK here, close out of that tool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line, but we're going to draw it so that it bisects or goes in between uh, these two stones. And I'll just show you 
It's similar to a method you might have seen in one of the other lessons. So we'll come to drawing and we'll use the line tool. But we're going to draw this as a bisector line. So just make sure you click on bisector there. And just make sure your vertex snap is on. So when your object snaps down here at the bottom of the screen, just make sure you've got a check mark in the word uh, vertex there. We need that on because we're going to snap to the very bottom of the stone. So it's asking for the start. So the start of the line is going to be zero on our grid. So zero, press enter. And then move that just, the first point is just at the very vertex of that stone. And the second one is at the vertex of the other one. And just pull that out. I'm going to just put this, try and sort of get it to about a little bit under the table of my stone. So somewhere about there. And now we're going to mirror that. So select that line that you've got, which is uh, in between the two stones. We're going to mirror that to the other side. So we'll go to transform and mirror. And we're going to mirror on the horizontal axis. So the top section of that line is going to form part of our U-prong and we'll have a, a curve that comes in underneath the stone and, and back up. And I'll show you a quick and very easy way to do that. So we'll come back to the drawing tab. And under the circle tool is a circle that's tangent to three curves is what we're going to use. So click that tool. And the first point of tangency is going to be the left and side, the left line on the left hand side. The second point of tangency is going to be on the right hand side. And the last point of tangency is going to be not our finger rail, but that second curve that we offset. Okay. So just make sure it's tangent to there. And just click once to place that. So now what we're going to do is just trim off our curves here. So holding your shift key, just select the two lines and the circle. And what we're going to do is use the trim tool. And we're going to trim this left hand side and right hand side and the very top of our circle. So we've got this nice geometrical <laughs> U-shape that we, we've created. So just press enter to close out that tool. And we want to join these because this is made up of separate curves at the moment. So we want to join them into one like that. And let's now run a pipe on that curve. So to do that, we'll come to modeling and under the cylinder command is a pipe with rounded caps. So click on that. And we want to use a diameter of uh, 0.8 mil. That's going to be the thickness of our prong here. So just come down here where it says diameter. Make sure you're using diameter as your measuring system. And we're going to type in 0.8 and enter. And 0.8 for the other side and enter. So that's our prong. So it might look a little fat at the moment because it's sitting right in the center of our setting or our dome there. So just um, select that and come to your right view is probably best and zoom in, scroll in. And we're going to move this prong so that it sits out at the edge of our stones there. And we'll just give it a little bit of rotation, not much, but I'm just going to rotate it so that it rotates just a fraction. And I think that's okay. Let's just check that in the perspective view. And just make sure that there's some contact with the stone. And if anything, probably we can drag it out a little more. Let's just go to our top view this time scroll in and let's just drag that out a little further and we might give it a bit more rotation come back to your front view in fact sorry let's come back to our right view 
and let's give it a little bit more rotation there. That should be about it. Let's just check that again from our top view. And that looks okay. You could rotate a little more if you want, uh, if you want to hide some of that sort of metal there. Give it a little more in the right view. I think that'll do. Check it again from your top view. That looks okay. So we're getting some contact there on the stone. Oh, that looks good to me. So basically now uh, we can just mirror this on the other side and then we'll array it around our settings. So let's select the prong. Let's go to transform mirror and we're going to mirror on the vertical axis. Got two copies there. And we'll be getting even contact on the other side of the stone uh, on either side. So uh, that's all okay. The only other thing to do is let's just come back to our perspective view. When we array this, uh, we just need a little bit of metal in here to hold these prongs in place. So depends on what you want to do. I've seen people just use a simple sort of cylinder there. We could do that. So let's just come to our front view and let's um, draw a circle. We want the center of the circle just to be right in the middle. Here you should get a mid or quad snap there. Just again, make sure your quad snap's on. Make sure your um, well quad or, or mid is on. And click there to place the first point. And uh, you can find a perpendicular point or you can type in down here uh, the diameter. Just make sure you're set to diameter. We'll make it 0.8, the same as the prong. And that's it. So come back to your perspective view and just spin around there. You'll see that circle sitting in the middle there. So just select that circle. And let's just extrude that. Let's go to transform. Sorry. <laughs> let's go to modeling, I should say. And extrude. And we're going to extrude it so that uh, it's hopefully wide enough we can stretch it a bit more if we need to but we'll say six I'm extruding from both sides by the way just make sure you've got set to both sides here in the command line and make sure you set to solid to make it a solid extrusion and we'll make it 0.6 I'll just press enter so that's what we've got now let's just maybe stretch that its width. Let's um, just just make sure that cylinder is selected. Just come to your top view and we'll use our gumball transform here to scale its width. So we're not going to affect the height of it, it's just the width. So just drag that out so that it's somewhere you know less than the girdle of the stone. Something like that looks alright. And again check that in the perspective view. Make sure that looks okay. That looks all right. I probably could use a little bit less extrusion, uh, make it a bit narrower. It's just uh, jutting out a fraction here at the base. It's being fiddly and pedantic with it, but I'll just scale it in a bit and a little bit more. It's actually probably the position of it. I'll just leave it like that. That looks fine. So why don't we just uh, boolean these shapes together. So we'll select one, holding shift, two, three. Let's use our boolean union to union all those together. And they're one piece now. Let's um, just cut a little hole in the bottom here for our stone. You can see the stones uh, bumping into that little support sort of rail there. So why don't we just come to the top view and again we'll just do this with a circle. Just go to the drawing command and draw a circle. The circle, let's just center it on the center vertex uh, on our stone or the mid. 
diameter. We don't need anything too big, but let's just make this maybe 0.6. And we'll go back to our perspective view. Uh, we can't see that circle, so why don't we go to our wire frame mode. And where's that circle? It's just down here. That's it there. I've just selected it. I'll go back to shaded. I'll drag that down a little bit, make sure it's past our bottom of our uh, setting there, and we'll just extrude that. So go to modeling, extrude, we'll extrude this, just make sure it passes through. That's good, and we'll just do a Boolean difference. So select the setting, come over here, under Boolean, we'll use a Boolean difference, and we're subtracting with that little cylinder and press enter. So that looks okay. Again, I mean, you know, you could adjust the position of the stone a little bit, but we won't bother with that. That's something that can be done at the point of uh, setting, obviously, the piece. But that's enough. Okay, so let's do an array of that shape. Why don't we just put the stones into a different color here, a different layer, select the gemstones, come down here, and we'll put them into gems 1, click on the name gems 1, put them into that layer, and let's select our setting, and if you come to your front view, we'll do an array, so go to transform, dynamic polar array, we know we have 30 stones, so we need 30 settings. So just type in 30 and click the OK button. Let's come back to our perspective view just to see that. But that's it. So what we can do now is a Boolean union. So let's go to Boolean union can select everything it doesn't matter that the stones are there it will ignore them and just press enter now as you know when we're booleaning uh, lots of objects in this case you know, 30 prongs on one side and 30 on the other it can take a little while and these prongs are sitting in sort of shared spaces uh, lined up perfectly so it, it yeah it's a little bit of hard work so just be patient with that that will just take a few moments to run I'll just let that run and um, pause the video and come back in a moment. Okay, that's done. And if you want to get uh, a metal weight, you know, you can come over to the weights tab here and just select the metal component and uh, you'll get some weights there. What do we got in uh, 18 yellow, 1.5 grams? I'll just change to my rented display mode and why don't we just... Uh, oh, let's do this in yellow gold. So look, um, try that exercise once you've done it once or twice. Try it again with a different size of stone or maybe a different cut. And, you know, you might have a different technique to create that section where I joined the, the cylinder. Uh, you can try something different if you want there. Maybe it's a rectangular shape or just adjust the height maybe of that circle. I think I used a 0.8. You could use maybe 0.6 or something there and just drop that down to the finger gauge and um, do the boolean that we did in that step. Um, might be another method. But that's it. Bye for now, we'll see you in the next video.